Brian. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. This is, of course, the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, we have a lot in store for you today. Think about what Tom would kind of want to go on. We're going to keep uh, Basil on. We're also going to have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle halfway through the show. I know uh, both of those guests are going to have uh, quite a bit to say. Uh, a little bit of an interesting market, not like too much going on, right? So you can kind of see this, you know, pre uh, election consolidation kind of moves going on, even in the light of uh, some interesting, I would say, earnings. You know, there's still a lot more going on this week. Let's take a look what we got going on right now in the industry indices. You have the composite about 0.12 percent. You have the Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.05 percent. That dollar is now popping above that 103 level, trading at 10407. Very strong. You have crude oil up about 2.28 percent. You have that E-mini essentially sideways, but off about 0.09%. And the gold contact uh, contract still making all-time highs. And uh, silver being very strong right behind it. You have the gold contract trading up 0.75%, 2,759 and 40 cents. You have silver up about 2.34%. Uh, copper also up about 0.56%. Uh, let's see, the Russell off about 0.43. Small caps have been getting kind of destroyed there recently. Uh, let's see what else we have. Anything kind of interesting happening. Nokia still getting kind of hammered, even on uh, not great guidance. What do we got here? New Star off a little bit. Well, actually, you know what we can talk about is Nextera. So, yeah, we were talking with some people as well about some of the uranium companies. And this morning, you're kind of, we'll see if it kind of recovered a little bit. Yeah, so you're you're really... This is kind of what I was saying a little bit yesterday, at least in the den, right? I'm worried we've kind of hit a saturation point here, um, at least in the short term on uh, uranium stocks. I believe CCJ is doing the exact same thing. It's doing a little bit worse than the market itself and definitely some of the other base materials. Yep, so CCJ off about 2.11%. Let's take a look at Nextera. These guys have their earnings coming up on Wednesday uh, that's actually going to be before the market opened, which is fantastic. So they're kind of sideways right now. Uh, but still a little bit of a down day last session. Uh, we'll see what kind of happens uh, for them today. Uh, Wall Street expects the, the this guy to uh, post about 99 cents in EPS. So that implies a 5.3% uh, rise. Well, revenue is expected to rise 11.7% to $8 billion. I do think the rest of the nuclear market is going to essentially follow how Nextera does, you know. So I don't know if this is a positioning, in a sense, uh, among other people, uh, basically expecting Nextera to maybe not do as well as kind of expected. Let's take a look at Oaklo because I haven't looked at that all today. Yeah, so down 10.58%. I would say that it is important to recognize that this movement to the upside is on pretty significant volume. Now, we have this movement to the downside on strong volume as well. Okay, so it's kind of hard to say right now where this settles up. Um, you know, of course, when you get some of these, I mean, Oklo itself is kind of an interesting one. We don't even have SMRs built yet. Uh, of course, that is going to occur, but, you know, this goes over, you know, this spreads out over uh, maybe even a decade, you know. So you have some really high movement here. You're going to come back down on some equal kind of volume, probably can some consolidation uh, lower than that high. Um, if Nextera does well, I can see these stocks getting a lot more attention and taking back up. And that would be a great time uh, to kind of add to that position because no doubt uh, long term, I think there was just some immediate exuberance on this. When I was talking about CCJ and UEC and some of these companies, I was talking about it in the sense like add this thing to your portfolio and just like forget about it. You know, I mean, you're going to get some really nice movement to the upside uh, throughout the years as they're kind of building out uh, this infrastructure. Um, I didn't think that the news cycle was going to take it in the way that it does. Uh, of course, you got to sell the news on it. And uh, I knew when I was seeing certain, you, you know, people online or accounts online talking about piling in to uranium, uh, that this, at least in the short term, uh, was going to experience some kind of pullback uh, because it's just saturated at that point. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Nextera. Again, looking for an EPS of 99 cents and then a revenue of $8.01 billion. Yeah, so baseball. Definitely, I'm still bullish on this kind of stuff, but I think that you're going to have, so especially with like CCJ and UEC, 
you're definitely gonna have somewhat of a pullback, right? You definitely get lighter volume right now on coming back down. I'm still super bullish on uranium. I just think up until this earnings release, uh, you know, I think you're gonna get a pullback. You might even get one afterwards as well. That's kind of my position on it. I'm still long-term for sure uranium. You guys know that uh, if you've listened to me, that's why I've been in these kind of stocks. So let's take a look at some other things uh, regarding earnings. Take a look at RTX quickly, that is Raytheon. Uh, some interesting stuff, news coming out with them. Off about 0.73%, but you had some really nice, <laughs> I guess, breath today. Um, so they uh, have a record $221 billion backlog uh, with the power's earnings surge. So they had third quarter sales hitting $20 uh, billion. That's up 6% from last year. That's fueled by strong demand in its defense and commercial aftermarket segments. The company's swing back to profitability, obviously, is pretty uh, fantastic, reporting $1.47 billion and net income compared to a 984 million loss in the prior year. Adjusted earnings per share surged 16% to $1.45, uh, beating Wall Street's 134 estimate. And uh, yeah, they did a really good job of getting profitable again. With the record of 221 billion uh, order backlog, RTX is raising the stakes, boosting its full year sales guidance to a range of 79.25 billion to 79.75 billion and lifting adjusted EPS expectations to as high as $5.58. Demand, obviously, is always going to be pretty good for companies like this, especially uh, during times of very rocky uh, geopolitical interactions. But uh, yeah, $2.5 billion operating cash flow, $2 billion in free cash flow this quarter, $1.1 billion return in capital. Yeah, they did pretty good. Now, caveat to that, which isn't necessarily affecting the situation, uh, but they're paying uh, $950 million to resolve federal charges of fraud and bribery, uh, which seems to be kind of part and parcel, parcel maybe like an operating expense uh, for some of these larger uh, kind of defense companies. Uh, essentially, they were uh, essentially scheming to bribe a high-level Qatari Air Force official from 2012 and 2016 with the goal of enabling Raytheon to win contracts from Qatar or Qatar's military, including a joint operations center that Raytheon would build for Qatar. Well, it's all right. Looks like everyone kind of took that okay. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back.